Hello, uh, I'm Esme McInespy and I am here to talk, or give a little bit of the background of the Fintana Credit Union. The Credit Union, um, as you may or may not know, was brought to Ireland. The idea of Credit Union was brought to Ireland in 1958. The idea came from Canada and um, the person who I would sort of associate with the Credit Union coming to Ireland was a lady called Nora Herlihy and she brought the idea in the mid 50s. The Credit Union was a mutually a mutual cooperative run uh, by the members, for the members and for the benefit of the members and uh, the idea came to Ireland in the mid 50s as I say Ireland then was a much different place than it is today and uh, she pioneered the thoughts of credit union and about 1958 I think the first credit union was set up in Dublin. My father Jim McGurn had an insurance business going in Fintana. He came from Fermanagh and he set up home in Fintana. He ran an insurance business and was uh, very involved in many facets of the local community. Uh, being and working with the public he was um, very aware of the social issues in Fintana. It was a town of high unemployment after the closure of the railways in the late 1950s, actually 1957. He was also um, a councillor in the local council and he was frustrated by the, the lack of investment in the area and sought, uh, you know, sought out various schemes to revitalise and um, regenerate the town and to give the people a sense of civic pride in their area. So one sort of scheme that he had uh, researched was the credit union. He, thought, he fully understood that the credit union was um, you know, a, a movement of mutual cooperation. So I had to accompany my mother and father uh, everywhere they went, basically. Um, and they were members of Clough Historical Society. So the annual outing for Clough Historical Society was uh, taking place in 1966, uh, about maybe August, July, August, September time. And I accompanied my mother and father to County Monaghan. The venue was uh, a field outside Clontibret. It was the scene of the Battle of Clontibret, which was fought in 1595, I think, uh, between Henry Ivanel and uh, the O'Neills. And uh, that was a successful battle for the O'Neills. Anyway, it was a great outing and we enjoyed it and uh, we were given the history. Suddenly there was a cloud burst. Everybody was dressed, there was torrential rain and that put pay to our outing. Everybody just went to the nearest cars to take shelter. Um, we were sheltering in our car, what was known as the Heavy Rover, the big bench seat in the front. And Father Gallagher from Tremor, he was the priest in the neighbouring parish of Tremor, and uh, he sat in and sheltered in our car. So myself and my mum got into the back and dad and Father Gallagher were in the front and they were both of the history. Uh, Father Gallagher was a local historian and he um, they talked at length about uh, the Battle of Clontibret and <laughs> they moved on to um, the Battle of the Yellow Ford in 1598. It was fought in Armagh between the same two parties and both men were very pleased at the outcome of both battles. So meanwhile, uh, my mum and myself were sitting in the back seat watching the rain. Uh, talk then went round to uh, the how to get an interest, the how to develop the town of Fintana. And um, Dad had mentioned the credit union to Father Gallagher. Now, in his previous parish in uh, Clonus, he had got involved with the credit union movement, and I think he may have been the first president of the Irish League of Credit Unions at the time. But he passed, uh, he had started the fledgling movement in Dromore. It was up and on about nine months at this stage. And he passed on the contact information to my father to make contact with these people. So without any delay, uh, Daddy contacted um, Nora Herlihy, the lady who brought the idea originally to Ireland. Uh, Michael O'Doherty from the Irish League of Credit Unions and uh, a guy from Derry called John Hume. Dad made uh, a number of 
uh, both formal and informal meetings and all with these people. But I suppose more so with John Hume because he was the nearest person. Uh, John Hume at the time was um, a teacher up in uh, St Columns College in Derry and uh, my father was familiar with that because his two brothers had actually boarded up there in their day and uh, they had that sort of thing in common but anyway Der John Hume was uh, involved with the setting up of the credit union movement in Derry in 1960 which was two years after the idea was brought to Ireland. Now Derry in 1960 was a pitiful place again an area of high unemployment and uh, they um, because of the, the situation the political situation of it uh, people weren't getting uh, weren't going to banks and getting mortgages or getting loans or anything like that it left the community of Derry sort of uh, vulnerable to uh, money lenders and things like you know, stuff that uh, you'd rather not be near. So um, Derry Credit Union started off in Ships Key Street and uh, it took off and it was a big hit with the Derry people and a very, very successful uh, credit union and still is. So my dad went down to the Ship Key Street, op Ship Key Street office and uh, got a bits and pieces of stationery, got all the literature and all that you would need for the setting up of the movement and uh, when he reckoned he had enough information he called meetings in his own house and brought in community spread of people who would um, be anxious to make good in the parish I suppose. People showed an interest in it yes and there was one guy in particular Pat Donnelly who was a friend of dad's who was a younger man and they took it on themselves to bring this challenge to get it, um, the credit union set up. So they went around canvassing practically every house in Fintana Parish and educated the people on the benefits of credit union. Now, at the time, Fintana <coughs> uh, was again, as I said before, a place of high unemployment. Uh, the population was made up mostly of small farmers in the rural areas and um, maybe self-employed builders but there weren't um, there was two there had been two banks in the town one of them closed but uh, the bank wasn't sort of the place where you'd readily get easy money so the idea of credit union uh, run by the members and for the benefit of the members um, sort of had a note with the people but anyway, it was a long time. They spent a long number of weeks going round and preaching to the, the people about the benefits. Um, and again, at that time, a lot of the young population uh, had, in Fenton and other rural towns had gone to make their living in England and London and places. And there was just, there was a, an urgency there to get something up and running so that the young people would stay at home and maybe buy or build or try to regenerate their own areas. Well, Daddy and Pat went round and um, with the interests of all our people, um, they decided to call a meeting in St Patrick's Hall. Now the meeting was called on um, Ash Wednesday in 1967 and um, they were quite happy that um, a number of people turned up. There was practically a, a person from nearly every house in the parish had come to the meeting. And there was guest speakers, and the guest speakers were um, a father, Father Patrick Gallagher from Dromor, and along with him he brought a uh, Dr. McGartland, who um, I'm not sure whether he resided in uh, Dromore all the time or whether he had come home as from America, and uh, brought an Andrew Montague, who these people were involved with the setting up of the credit union in Dromore, and they were able to address the meeting and tell if the the pitfalls or whatever, but the benefits as well as everything else. And there was a question and answer session and everybody seemed to be in agreement that this was the way to go. So before that night was out, um, there was tea made and it was very nice meeting and all the rest of it. And um, before the night was out, they set up an interim, uh, an interim group of directors to take in hand the running 
and setting up of this organisation. So £30, it was a pound to join uh, to become a shareholder and on that night 30 people came forward and lodged £1 with the Infant Committee and thereby became shareholders of Fintan Credit Union and you can say that that was the night that it actually was formed. With the £30 they decided uh, to take their savings to the local post office, the post office savings account, and with the kind permission of Father McLean, who was also the part, he was the parish priest in Fintana, but he was also very much involved in um, wanting to upgrade the parish, etc. And he handed over the hall each Saturday night for the credit union to go and collect money. So this band of men went down to the Barrels of St Patrick's Hall every Saturday night and for about a year and gathered up whatever money was gathered and uh, more people joined and people were enthusiastic and rightly so. So um, about a year after uh, the gathering of shares they had they were in a position to open a loan book and uh, they were also in a position to look at premises at this stage too, it was decided that um, maybe fitting a parish wasn't the way to go. That They had a common bond with the credit union. The credit union uh, is bound by a, a common bond. Fintan has started off with Fintan a parish credit union and it took in the parish. Now, um, that meant that maybe some people three miles out the road or whatever couldn't join because they weren't Fintan a parish, they were Trillic parish or Tremor or somewhere else. So it was made, a decision was made to uh, forget about the parish boundary and to set uh, a common bond of a six mile radius and that allowed for extra people to come in. October 67, the first annual general meeting took place and at that 25 people attended. And um, so the first president um, was Michael Mellon and Michael was from Affafad, one end of the parish. Uh, a farmer and Michael was the first president. Uh, the vice president was my father, Jim McGarden. Premises became available in Five King Street, Fintana, so the board of uh, directors uh, went forward and put a bid in this house and got it. So out of St Patrick's Hall they, lay, they went and opened this uh, little office in a terraced house in King Street. Now the terraced house was just a living room and an upstairs bedroom and a small scullery at the back and an outdoor toilet. And um, Jim Colgan and Pat Donnelly, they were, I think, perhaps both joiners and they converted uh, the back wall into uh, two divisions and made like two desks. And then there was a bench seat and there was a range in the credit union office. Now, my abiding memory of the credit of the range was um, every Saturday, my father would load up uh, a couple of bags of turf and blocks, take them in the car, and we would go down and light the fire in Five King Street to Fenton at about five o'clock in the evening, and that was to have the place uh, cosy and warm for the shareholders when they came in to lodge their money. Persons would come in on the Saturday night and lodge their money. Uh, it was like a Kalian house. Um, along the bench, the men would sit and they would go to the counter, deposit their money or whatever, then come out and chat, smoke, do whatever. And uh, it was a hive of activity. And uh, one of the committee members was Mickey McSorley, and Mickey was a very uh, jovial man, and the fun was, the crack was great. Um, at that stage, they had opened their loans book, so uh, you could go to the likes of Mickey McSorley or uh, Jim Colgan, Michael Mellon, whoever, and look about your loan. Now, obviously, you had, to, you had to adhere to the rules, but it was much easier going to your, your next door neighbour to ask for a loan. They were wanting, it was a cooperative movement, it was mutual, whatever, and they wanted to um, help everybody. Uh, the credit committee was represented by Mickey McSorley, and uh, his report, when they asked for his report, his report was two words. And the two words were no complaints. <laughs> so no complaints. Uh, that summed it up. Fintan of Credit Union went from strength to strength and uh, people adhered to the rules and regulations. Um, 
the loans um, were mostly for house improvements, home improvements and cars. Now we had a, a car dealership in Fenton, a, um, a Mazda car dealership run by Brian McSorley. And I think every last man in Fenton drove a Mazda, just went to the credit union, got their loan, got their car and whatever. But you could see uh, a pride in the people that this was, um, they were able to be helped and uh, they all appreciated um, this organisation. Now there was no, it was so, it was run by volunteers. There were farmers, builders, teachers, whatever. They were all just ordinary people. Uh, there was no paid staff for that. Everybody was given up their time and um, their abilities. So the credit union went from strength to strength and celebrated its uh, 21st birthday in 1988. I suppose I should mention that uh, it wasn't all men. <laughs> I myself served on most of the committees throughout my time with it and enjoyed every minute, I have to say. With the credit union going from strength to strength, uh, it got bigger and better. They then moved out of King Street and onto the main street to what was a listed building. It was the old station house on the main street. And again, the men who were uh, given up their time and service uh, and their um, volunteering, they would make, make the place into like an office. That served the purpose for a long number of years. Then business was very, very brisk and uh, young people were coming in to um, get maybe a veil of uh, loans for to put down a deposit on a house or to buy sites or whatever and to move out of social housing and then build their own houses and that. So this um, this movement helped, you could see it helping the young people and giving them that first step up the ladder. The first 21 years was great and uh, then things were going to the, getting so busy that actually the volunteers didn't have the time to do all the work that was asked of them. So they brought in their first um, paid member of staff, first employee. That meant that the credit union then could open up during the day because at that stage it was only opening one night a week and um, whilst it was great going down doing your three or four hours in the credit union office uh, then they were able to open up in the afternoon and then maybe when we got the paid member of staff they were able to open up during the week as well. So that is where we're at. Uh, the credit union went on and on. Um, it's now celebrating this year will be celebrating 53 years in business and it's a far cry from the £30 original takings on the, that night in 1967. They're now dealing with multi-millions uh, with three or four paid members of staff. And, um, you know, I think we, uh, we do owe a great uh, debt of gratitude to the, the founding fathers and those people who gave enthusiastically of their time and their, what more can you give in your time? Uh, they gave their time willingly and uh, for the betterment of the parish of Fintan and for the betterment of their fellow Fintonians. Funny enough, uh, on the night of um, Ash Wednesday in 1967, there was one voice of dissent from the floor and that it was said that nothing ever works in Fintan and the credit union will not work either. Well, happily, that has not been the case. It's a fantastic um, success story. And it has gone from this to now this. Uh, Turlough Montague, Vincent Cunningham, Pat Donnelly, Jim McGurn, Kevin Hagen, Pat Campbell, Dan Murray, Dan Slevin, Barney McQuaid, Bridie Darcy, Owen Kelly, Michael Mellon, John O'Callaghan, Jim Culgan, Michael McSorley, Michael Donnelly, Patrick Ross, Joe Ross, B. McSorley, Joseph Campbell, Hugh Darcy, PJ Taggart, Charles Rogers, Arthur, John Donnelly, and Michael Cunningham. So that were the first the first twenty-five uh, shareholders that uh, attended the first annual general meeting.